Good afternoon, everybody. My name is Josh Toso, and welcome back to another edition of the Starboard Portal. We have a special treat for you all today. Uh, some local knowledge is going to be uh, given to us today on San Diego, uh, one of the iconic sailing venues in our country. If you ever sail in San Diego, you know that uh, it's a little bit tricky. Um, if you have never sailed in San Diego, you definitely should. And glad you're tuning in to be able to watch this and get some tips and tricks from two of the, the best sailors uh, out of San Diego, the best sailors our country has to offer, two American sailing legends, Mark Reynolds and George Zabo are joining us today. So thank you to Mark and George, and thank you to Quantum Sales for, for helping us out today. And thank you to all of you kind of watching in live and anyone else who's gonna be watching in and playback later, I'm sure that many people are. Um, if you're watching today live, please remember that there is the chat feature on the right-hand side of your uh, YouTube live uh, player. And please feel free to put in any questions that you might have for George and uh, Mark. They're going to be going through various different locations within San Diego and racing locations. And please feel free to put in any questions you have there. And we'll ask the questions uh, during those location talks, as well as uh, at the end, we'll ask a few questions as well. Uh, so uh, um, thank you again for everyone joining us. And uh, again, if you enjoyed, uh, enjoyed today's session or any of the other sessions that we put on, uh, please support our efforts to build a community of active and engaged sailors through the Starboard Portal by purchasing or renewing a U.S. sailing membership. We have a ton of great programming uh, and content coming up on the schedule. And thanks to U.S. sailing members, we're able to adapt and evolve to better serve sailors with content like this. So visit us at mem.ussailing.org to join and renew your U.S. sailing membership today. And without further ado, I'd like to introduce George Zabo and Mark Reynolds. George and Mark, drop some local knowledge on us, boys. All right. All right, Josh. Thanks. So San Diego, if you're going to just tune in for two minutes, the short version is if the wind's out of the south, you probably want to go left. If the wind's from 245 to 65, you probably need to play the shifts and the pressure going up the middle. And if the wind's 275 or further right, you probably want to go right. Um, that said, you know, San Diego, it's a pretty neat place that it's really similar wind day to day, but there's slight changes day to day. Um, and throughout the year, there's just slight changes. Um, the, when you come out here to go sailing, prepare to be cold. The water goes over to Japan, to Alaska, down the coast. So it's always running down the coast and it, it's not Miami. So you're, you're definitely in, uh, you're, you're definitely in, in colder water and you, you typically need more, um, more clothing out there than you would, would normally in other places. And looking at San Diego, through the year, our, I hope I can get this correct here, um, through the year, January, February are our wettest months, March is still cold, bit of breeze and frontal, April, we come out here for nude or, you know, a little bit later, Yachting Cup, it's one of our breezier months and a lot of fun to sail, but definitely bring a ski hat. As we get into June and July, the weather's lighter. We won't have a lot of wind, but we'll always have wind through the summer. A great sea breeze at that time. When we get into August, September, September's championship month. Um, there's always good breeze and typically one windy week of, of sailing. When you get to October, November, we get into the frontal, the light zones and of the year again, and it, it can get weird and back into our, our rainy season. So you never know what's gonna happen that time of the year. Um, going for day to day before we get into the race courses that we sail out in San Diego, I like to look at several forecast systems. I like to look at the NOAA weather and sometimes it's useful, sometimes it's Greek, but it gives you the NOAA discussion just gives you a great overview of what's happening and what might be happening next week if it's getting warmer or colder or whatever. After that, I like to go to sail flow. I actually love to look at the plus forecast, get the wind velocities, and then I like to see the pro forecast of what the wind servers are doing and what the wind server thinks is going to happen through the, the week. We'll go to predict wind and they're absolutely fantastic on the wind directions. And we can look at the directions and see if the models agree. And it looks like today, you know, the wind's going to shift right again um, as the day goes on. So it's just a great place to start every morning. And if you go to satellites, they're not that useful. Um, this time of year, we have a, June gloom and you can see the, well, you can't see it, but we have June gloom that is covering the Southern California coast and this gloom just doesn't really burn off throughout the day. But a standard San Diego day might start off 
with very light winds, no wind at all, very difficult to sail out to the race course. And as the wind comes up, we'll get, you know, south, southwest um, wind building, and it'll build towards the west as the day goes on. And it's not a place like Long Beach where you have to bolt to the right to catch the shift. It can oscillate back and forth, and you'll have to take the pressure and the shifts to find out. And every day is a little bit different, where this is a typical day. You know, what I mentioned before is that the forecast for tomorrow is very similar uh, on windy. 5 a.m., we still have light and variable. We have you know, a little bit southwest coming up in the morning. By the time race time comes up, the breeze is coming in from the left and shifting right through the day. And you'll see that with slight variations every single time you go racing out here in San Diego. You know, that said, we have numerous sailing venues in San Diego. We have inside Mission Bay, we have outside Mission Bay. We have the championship race course down here in the far roads. We have the near roads. In the bay, we will race up and down the bay, of course. If you're sailing the Wednesday night beer can, you might be racing in this part by Harbor Island. If you're coming here for Lipton Cup, you'll be sailing in what I think is the worst part of the bay, down by the Star of India. And, of course, there's always South Bay. So what I like to do is take you through each race course and talk about some of the nuances of each course. Where do you want to begin, Mark? Well, I just want to uh, I'm going to emphasize your, your – uh, you know, a short version from the beginning that usually it's a go right place like most of the West Coast. And uh, whether you're sailing, you know, maybe a little more so in the ocean because you have a little less effects of uh, oscillating. It doesn't oscillate quite as much and you know, not as much land effect. But I think that, uh, uh, and as George kind of showed there pretty quickly, the weather really doesn't change that much you know, we don't have much in the way of seasons. There's not a whole lot of difference between December and in the middle of summer. I mean, there, there's a little bit. It might be 60 in the winter and 75 in the summer, yeah, air temperature. But generally, it's a west, southwest to west wind. Very seldom do we ever get anything from, you know, it's almost always in that quadrant from the south to the west. Sometimes we'll get a little bit on the north side of west, but it's, it's a pretty predictable Pretty much, like George said, very little wind in the morning. You know, sometimes we have to get a tow out. Uh, breeze starts picking up around noon. Uh, but in a way, it kind of, uh, I think, is kind of has gotten locals a little bit too programmed into, you know, tacking at the start and going right. Uh, you know, I've seen, as a matter of fact, there's a lot of championships that we've had here that have been won by people from out of town. I would say the majority of them. We had a lot of Star Worlds here over the years, and the only one ever won by a local, who I guess, would have been uh, Lowell. But Lowell had sailed probably 10 world championships here, and he finally uh, won one in San Diego. But I think you get a little bit programmed into, into you know, going right and yeah it, it works most of the time but you still have to keep your eyes open and so um i think that's just uh you know the case anywhere sometimes the locals get a little bit too locked into their local stuff but that said it doesn't really change too much in san diego and most most of the time if you you know the line will be a little bit biased particularly if we're talking in the ocean a little biased on the uh, port end and usually people are at the starboard end wanting to tack right away. And, and when you have a westerly that's 8 to 12 knots, that's usually going to work pretty good. So like George said, what we thought we'd do is since there are so many really venues within San Diego, you know, you may be coming to Mission Bay Yacht Club and sailing on Mission Bay or San Diego Yacht Club or Southwestern on the Main Bay or Coronado on South Bay uh, or out in the, any of those clubs out in the ocean or in the middle of the main bay. So there's just a lot of, or right off the Yacht Club. I mean, that's where George and I grew up <laughs> in the cove off the Yacht Club, which is really more like a mountain lake. I mean, we've got a big, we have Point Loma. I'm not sure what the elevation is, three or, three or 400 feet. Does that sound right, George? Yeah, about uh, that. Something like that. And we're sailing right underneath that. So you see the puffs coming on the water. And so in a way, it was a great place to grow up because we had that, real shifty lake sailing when we were kids sailing the Sabbaths, but you could go out in the ocean in a snipe or a star and work on speed testing, you know, something that's really difficult to do on a shifty lake. So we really had a little bit of everything. I guess the only thing you don't have a lot of in San Diego is strong wind. 
uh, generally eight to 12 knots and it's pretty pretty locked into that. You know, in the winter, sometimes we get a storm that comes through, but I used to windsurf and those storms sometimes didn't even last long enough to uh, get down to the beach and get the rigs all set up and get out on the water. So uh, we're not known for strong winds. You gotta go up to Long Beach or San Francisco for that. But uh, yeah, so that's kind of my, my quick summary. And uh, yeah, maybe we'll get into, I don't know, you wanna start at the more, most northerly spot, I guess, Mission Bay Yacht Club. George Sales snipes there a lot and Lido's another We can, another we can do that. Um, so the first spot, well, it goes inside Mission Bay. It's a um, unique little area to, to sail, if we can get this to work. Um, and down here inside Mission Bay, we'll typically have a start line down in this area. And you'll see that there's a few points and the wind will come between the points. And so the same general overall direction trends through the day apply, but you'll have puff lines that'll come through down and, and bigger shifts and some geographic shifts as you sail around these points over Mission Bay. Current typically comes out here, goes to the ocean, comes back in. There's a small wrap of current around this point going into the back bay, but it's not significant or something you worry about or even plan your ley lines about. And typically this is very heads up ceiling, go for the pressure and figure out which way to go once you get the pressure. And that's you know pretty simple that way. As you come outside Mission Bay, we'll come out this cut and we'll sail close to shore. And you can see the depth changes as we go down the shore here. And with that depth changes, oftentimes when you sail out in the morning, you'll see thin lines of kelp or grass at you know, almost as the contours are here, you'll see that line of kelp in that direction. And you can tell the current gets stronger as you go offshore. So in the morning, the wind's more left. It's not as big a deal because it, it's going to be more even about side to side. It'll change your ley line. But as the wind goes more right, it can be more favored to go more right to stay out of the current as you go up, up wind in this direction. Um, What's different about Mission Bay and other places is that the wind can be more streaky and come in bands. And so sometimes you have to sail up a band of breeze and you can't always go across that band. You might have to tack back into that band for pressure. If you're the one looking all this afternoon and you're on port tack going up wind, you can see oil here, you probably got to go right. Um, late in the afternoon, if the wind starts shifting left, same as everywhere else, it, it can always pay to go left. That's really the short bits about Mission Bay is just that the current runs stronger as you get offshore. So it's harder to get the weather mark and it's okay to understand the weather mark a little bit sometimes. Um, yeah, sometimes it depends on the type of boat you're sailing. If you're sailing a, you know, FJ out the ocean or even a snipe, you may not get that far offshore. Uh, if you're sailing, you know, like when they did the America's Cup, which was went way offshore, you have, you know, a lot more current. So essentially, that's another reason why West Coast is usually right. Not only is there a slow, persistent shift to the right, but when you get offshore, there's more adverse current, the southerly current. And you'll even get sometimes, uh, even a mission, uh, off Mission Beach, some eddies, you know, so some reverse currents along the uh, shore. So I think that's one of the things about all these different venues is there's a different mix of of importance, like George said, a Mission Bay current's not really a factor. It's pretty, it's flat water, very flat water. The geographic shifts you have because of the points and the land and the buildings that are on the uh, beach there, and uh, and then uh, when you turn to go outside, and there's usually a little bit of stronger wind inside than outside too, uh, because of the thermal effect. So when you do get a little bit, you know, out in the ocean, then You've got waves, you have offshore current instead of tidal. So things, your whole mix of uh, variables changes quite a bit just sailing on a Mission Bay Yacht Club. If you go to the Thistle Midwinters West, for instance, you may sail a few days inside and outside and there's, you know, it's a pretty big difference on how to set your boat up and how to tactically uh, get around the race course. That's an aside that we have swells and we have chop out there. And most of the sail designs that came from San Diego over the years are always fuller than everything else. And if you want to bring flat sails to San Diego, you probably don't want to use them in the ocean. That's Yeah, we used to do a lot of snipe testing where we just sail right along the lee shore of Mission Bay. Bay. It doesn't look very big. It's, it's actually not very big, but you can, yeah, right where the arrow is, you can get a pretty reasonable steady wind along there with flat water. And then we could easily go out the breakwater and do speed testing outside in the ocean with a little more chop and wave action. 
Uh, waves also are a lot bigger in the winter than they are in the summer. So there's, that's probably one of the, the bigger changes in conditions between in the seasons are the winter waves. It can get yeah. pretty big. Yeah, absolutely. Um, if you're coming down for, you know, waves or regattas or other regattas, you might end up sailing in South Bay. Um, current in South Bay is very different down here. You'll launch out of Coronado Yacht Club typically and sail out and you'll be in relatively shallow water all the way across and not a big change in depth. The only change in depth that you really get is when you get further east here in the shipping channel. Um, so that, you know, the, the, this is deeper water here in the channel, but the race area is pretty similar shallow depth all the way across. And South Bay is unique. You want to know the current just so that you know the ley line, if it's going to change as you get towards the leeward mark. But because the wind has to come across the strand here and bounce and come back down and set down, it behaves a little more like a lake. And you get a lot more shears from the left or from the right. And the, the pressure that comes in the sides can be much more important. So you want to watch the pressure on that first beat to decide which way to go. The trend through the day to the right often happens still. And by the end of the day, it might be coming more this way from almost down the channel. If it does that, the, the channel may come in more into play if, if it does get that far right. So South Bay is just uniquely different in that it's very puffy shifty and you're looking for wind lines and, and shears to, to get out to the race course. Yeah, I'd say South Bay is my favorite place to sail. And, you know, it's really good for snipes, uh, even stars. We've had some star racing down in there, uh, done sail testing down in there. It's, you know, it's reasonably steady compared to elsewhere in the Bay because you just have this strand. There's no buildings on it either. Uh, are very few and uh, you know the water's relatively smooth current is not a big factor because you're down you know pretty deep in the bay here and like George says it's reasonably shallow so there's not a ton of water down there the channel is actually where the starting line is but even along the channel there's it's not a not a big factor uh, and it's just a, a little windier than being on the ocean I mean as much as five knots windier and a nice oscillating breeze. You know, the laser, we've had laser North Americans, a uh, lot of snipe stuff, thistle. It's just, it's a, you know, really good, really good place to sail. Uh, yeah. Closest yacht club, like George said, well, there's a Coronado Cays yacht club, but generally it's at a Coronado yacht club. Um, but we'll even sail sometimes at a San Diego yacht club. It's a long tow down, but we sail in the ocean a lot too. And that's, that's a long ways away. I and mean, that's kind of one of the disadvantages of sailing out of, San Diego Yacht Club, you do have quite a ways to go to get to either South Bay or, or out in the ocean. Uh, I don't know, yeah, it's probably yeah. a, maybe a four or five mile tow. It's a long way. It's a long yeah. commute. It's a super long commute. But it's, um, South Bay is a nice, nice location for sailing. Yeah. Um, as we move up the bay, if you're coming out here for Lipton Cup, we'll typically pop the start line down here by the Star of India and it's i feel the worst place in the bay to sail but that's where we get to sail this and it's great for spectators uh, weather mark will typically be up here in a in a westerly um the current is more of a factor we have a fairly deep channel right here that is built for aircraft carriers so they like a lot of water and it's a pretty deep channel so if you come off the start line here and you get across uh, there's a, a museum aircraft carrier here actually as well the midway and once you get past that midway you're into this channel and the current can be going significantly strong one way or the other. And so you want to watch that as you come off the line and head to the left. Um, typically, you'll see if it's southerly, you might see some left shear a little bit. If it's uh, more northerly, you might see some puffs and winds, right winds as you get up towards Harbor Island. But it's also a very heads up place to just play the shifts and, and get out and you know see what's out there and go sailing and figure it out every day and every race. And there's some geographical uh shifts that you kind of have to keep your eye out for but uh you know generally oscillating a little bit just like everywhere else a little bit of trend to the right during the day uh this uh called harbor island here that runs along there that's like georgia is a perfect uh place to watch racing from there's uh you know you can walk all the way back and forth on that and it's a little choppier and than other places because you have a lot of weekend traffic of Boats, uh, you know, going in and out. Uh, it's a little bit yeah, difficult in that respect because of, of the traffic. 
I think whenever we have racing there, we have to get permits to do it. Uh, there's a lot of racing that goes on in San Diego that goes around set marks around the bay. So we might start over by San Diego Yacht Club, for instance, maybe go out towards the ocean and then go all the way down deep into the bay by the bridge, by Coronado, and then back up around. And so then you really get to feel the, the current and the geographical situation. What George was talking about, Lipton Cups, a little bit slightly more confined, but depending on the wind direction, particularly if you get a southwesterly or southerly, it's going to be pretty, pretty difficult. And the westerly is a lot nicer. Uh, yeah. West Northwest, where it's coming down right down the bay. Yeah, we're in the southerly here. If, if you have the southerly, you're starting this way and going this way. You don't have buildings in the way, but you have aircraft carriers above you at the, and above your weather mark, so it makes it a little bit shifty in that regard. Um, as we move up the bay, we have you know the typical bay race or the Wednesday night beer can races. They typically start in this area of Harbor Island, and those starting at five or six o'clock late in the day, the westerly is typically filled in. If the southerly is filled in, you can have um, a lot of left shears or more left pressure along this shore. But if the westerly fills in, it's heads up the bay to find the pressure. But if the wind's more northwest, if it's in a 300 zone, you definitely can have hit and miss right puffs coming off Harbor Island here. And sometimes you can be in four knots and then you can be in 15 knots in a big righty and then in light wind again. So the question is how close can you get to the shore as you go up wind on that? And so I don't mind getting up there, but you know you, you can live or, or die that way. The current's not as big of a deal on that first beat because the weather mark for beer cans is typically up in this corner. But then on the run, we'll typically run back somewhere down the bay. As we run down the bay, it's really hardly ever do I jibe set here, typically bearway set. And if the current's coming out the bay, we'll typically run to this far shore and try to get all the way down this far shore as far as we can to get out of the current. The current's in the middle of the bay, uh, I'm sorry, if the current's coming in, we'll, we'll typically come out a little bit and then get a little bit more um, steady breeze and find a way to jibe down the bay. As you get down the bay, if you're racing down the bay towards the bridge down this way, we have aircraft carriers parked here and aircraft carrier pens, and there's typically a pretty good hole around here. And so it's always a question mark, do you go inside for the shorter distance or you go outside and get more pressure and both will pay on different nights. And so it's always super entertaining for what you can do in that, in that part of the bay. One thing I should probably point out is, so Harbor Island was totally man-made uh, from fill, from dredging the, the bay. And so the rock uh, wall along there is go, you know, relatively straight down. So you can almost put your bow right into the shore there. Shelter Island was partially man-made. There was a, um, a shoal there that got built up again from uh, dredging. And you could get right in there, but generally you never would because there's hotels all along there and there's a light spot uh, right off the shoreline. So that's not usually a place you end up. Now it's a little trickier along North Island because the, over the years there's old, old piers, old jetties, there's you know various rocks. There are times where you wanna get pretty close to it, but you're not sure there's a, like a ramp somewhere in here and there's just a lot of old stuff. Yeah. I've actually run into a little bit further out the channel, run into uh, rocks and, and submerged jetties. So that's a little yeah. bit <laughs> trickier. Uh, I think the only guy you could probably take along that knows that really well would be Dennis Connor. And he's, I think he's hit all those rocks too and that's why he knows where they are. Oh, good. Yeah, the rule of thumb is if you come out of San Diego Yacht Club, um, avoid this area, this is a shoal. As you come across here to the ammunition pier, um, the bay is pretty good. But once you get past that ammunition pier, this part of the bay here is kind of dodgy. And there's a submerged jetty here that is really bad. And people go up on that from time to time. So if you can stay in the middle of the bay, you're much better off. The ballast points to the next shoal as you come out. Um, but after that, you're pretty well free other than the, the jetty, which is half submerged on here. Those are the only real dangers we have. Um, but yeah, definitely there's some rocks along here. Next to the jetty is pretty tricky because, yeah, like George said, a lot of it, especially at high tide, is submerged. So you kind of don't, you know, a lot of times you don't see anything except for the the markers that are are spaced along it. Um, yeah. But yeah, you've got to. There is a, sl a small hole you can get through somewhere right around here. Right here, uh, a little bit above is yeah, kind of in that area. But uh, don't do it. Uh, going through there. 
Uh, so you got to go around that. If, if you want to find it, try to line up these two channel markers. Then there's a trapezoidal looking rock that's always covered by bird shit and go about 50 to 60 feet north. And that's the, that's the cut, but don't do it in a borrowed boat. I sailed um, one time with Dennis and the star in a beer can race and the current was coming in. Tide was coming in pretty strong and we dip, went through that hole to get outside the jetty to get out of the current. Uh, weather mark was just slightly outside the bay. Uh, or, yeah. Yeah. So that really brings us to the outside courses. And, you know, if you're sailing a junior regatta or a smaller event, you might be sailing up here inside of the jetty. And it's going to be more shifty, um, a lot more effect from Point Loma here. And if you're sailing a, a bigger regatta, we're going to be further, further outside, away from that jetty. And so what happens on each of these courses is, so we'll have the, a junior regatta, we might have a local one design weekend down in this area. And if we're going to have a, a big championship, world championship regatta, we're going to sail way down here. Um, you know, same thing with the current. We'll start the current first. It's still coming down the coast. But as you can see, we have this spot where we can have a back eddy. Um, it's hard to know what the current's doing every day. It's a little bit different. If we have a south breeze for a few days beforehand, it might go the opposite direction. But there can be a little bit reverse current coming up here um, or a little current relief. Typically, the race committee will keep us further offshore so that we don't have that effect of the current. So um, you see Point Loma here. The wind likes to come, go over the point, uh, increases in velocity. So you have totally a great reach on the way in with stronger breezes. But that increase of velocity here provides a right shift to any race courses up in this area. So if the weather marks in this area, you'll always find that not just the righty and the wind shifts, but throughout the day, you can find a stronger righty and more pressure, uh, right pressure up, up in this area. So. Yeah, almost all of our championship regattas are, you come out of the uh, harbor and, and you go due south. Uh, very seldom do we ever turn and go west. Uh, America's Cup was to the west. Uh, it gets harder, harder and harder to set marks further out you get because of the depths. Uh, I think they had one star, I know they had one star worlds that uh, was to the west of the point, but there's a bunch of uh, kelp beds right off the end of the point too. So you have to go around that to, uh, uh, you have to go quite a bit south just to be able to turn right uh, past the end of the point. So most of our championships are pretty far south. Matter of fact, if you got your phone on you, it usually uh, starts telling you you're an international, you, you know, you want to hook into a Mexican uh, 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 phone company. Because Mexico's right down there. Here's the, here's the border down here. Yeah. We're not too far from the border. But um, they tend to like to sail us pretty far south because the wind is less effect at the point. Uh, wind's a little bit steadier. Uh, it generally won't have any current at the starting line, but there'll be some current at the weather mark. And there can be as much as a knot and a half. or So, I mean, it can be ripping pretty good sometimes at the weather mark. So that's yeah, just yeah. another reason why it's generally favored to go right uh, when you're in the ocean. You know, there's been the last, one of the last big regattas we had the star in the star was the Star Worlds uh, out down there. And actually early in the regatta, uh, Ledbetter was starting at the boat, uh, attacking right away. And I think if I remember right, uh, he won the Vanderveer, which is our person that's winning halfway through the regatta. But then things started to change and it wasn't quite so normal after that. And people started getting hurt going right. So like I said before at the beginning, got to keep the eyes open too. Yeah. For, for that regatta, that was a um, August, September regatta. And we have the, the sea breeze typically going on. And with the sea breezes out in the desert, you'll see the thunderheads. But late that time of year in September or so, we start seeing some monsoonal stuff from time to time. And you'll see these crazy clouds that start turning the thunderheads and then coming up flat over the top and coming back out to the ocean. And once they blow off, the tops blow off and come back out to the ocean, all bets are off and it gets a little bit more goofy out in the race course. But fortunately that will happen maybe once or twice a summer at the, at the most, but it's a pretty unique situation. That and Santa Ana's where the Santa Ana you always hear about, it can be pretty strong in Los Angeles. Here in San Diego, the Santa Ana will come out and you'll get a convergence zone. It'll be very light and you'll have a hard day of just sitting around on the water waiting for either the Santa Ana to fill in off the land or the sea breeze to fight it and come back in. So not sure if I've ever had a good race, you know, or a, a full race in a Santa Ana. Doesn't usually get out to the ocean 
And if it does, it's there's transition zone, like George said. I've seen it a little bit, a few times in South Bay where it's filled in, but it's pretty unusual to have a, uh, the Santa Ana, the Eastern, uh, out on the coast. It's general. Yeah. After, you know, our fire stuff, it's very strong mountains, which are not that far to the east of, you know, where we are here. Top top mountains, top of the mountain is what, 50 miles away maybe, something like that. And that's yeah. 5,000 feet, 5,000 foot mountain, or maybe even six. Yeah, yeah, you have very tall mountains over there and a very hot desert on the other side. So as we sail in these areas, you know, same things apply. The wind fills in the morning. You're going to have left pressure with the more south breeze in the morning. You don't know if it's going to stay left for a while or if it's going to shift right more quickly. And so I don't mind going left on the first beat. But, you know, I like to watch the few days before because there's always a trend in San Diego. I like to see what happened the few days previous to help make up my mind on what's happening that day as well. And so you'll either be able to go left in that first beat or you'll go right. But a lot of times if you go right, right away, there can be more left pressure, even if you're sailing at a header and the guy on the left's going to get you. So it's, it's still not, you know, just go right. Um, as you get to the weather mark in any of these venues up here, you know, often unless the wind's at 270, 280 or further right, oftentimes bears away is, bearing away is very profitable because you get into stronger current and you drive early on the line because the current will take you down to the leeward mark. And so that's very often you'll see a significant portion of the fleet will bear away on the run and, and then come back in. As the second and third beat come on, people will go to the right, but I don't mind being the weather boat going to the right. Um, that said, as the thunderheads die down uh, in, in the summertime and the, the thermal influence is, is waning, at two o'clock, three o'clock, for sure by four o'clock, the right shift is typically stopping and it's coming back left a little bit as the breeze decreases. Another weird one you get sometimes is that the breeze doesn't always go over this point. And you, sometimes you have left pressure that comes in and wraps around the point on the left side. And sometimes you can see it in the morning, sometimes you can't. So it's just one of those odd things to watch for if the left, if the pressure is going to be left. And that happened a lot last year. Probably not a bad idea if you're going to sail in the ocean uh, and you get to the venue beforehand, go out to the lighthouse and you have a good view. It's right on the end of the point here, right on top. And yeah. you can see all the way down to Tijuana and Mexico, but you can see the race area and even see the wind on the water a little bit. Yeah, absolutely. And be prepared to figure out how to get kelp off your boat. Um, yeah. The kelp grows from the bottom. It, it grows from bottom 90 feet up and then it comes off. And so it could be an island or it could be a leaf or it could be a, a lot of weed or uh, grass or something. So uh, we always have a supply of kelp sticks on every boat we go sailing out here. It's pretty important. Um, cold water and kelp, and but great place to sail, and just always great place to go testing because you can go sail one day and you think, oh, I could do something a little bit better in eight knots, and then next day you can test that one thing and that one control and that one idea to go out fast in the same condition. So it's been absolutely remarkable that way. And just you can see, there's a lot of like Mark said, there's a lot of different venues that we can go sail out here. It's just seven different race areas that we have that are pretty unique in each each spot. So we haven't covered the uh, the cove right off San Diego Yacht Club. Oh gosh, <laughs> in here where we uh, grew up. Sailing. Hey George and Mark, before you go to the cove, can I just uh, interject quickly with a question um, that sure. came in? Um, so, and you may have gone over this a little bit already, but the uh, question is from uh, uh, Pete Whitby, and he'd like you to comment maybe a little bit more detail um, on the current direction and speed uh, in the near and far roads courses. So it changes. Um, and, you know, you might want to think, oh, I can look at the HF radar and find out what's going on. HF radar doesn't really cover our sailing area very well. Sometimes you got an arrow or two, but you won't really know. And so I would surprise if you have, if you have over a knot, I would be surprised. You know, it could be half a knot or three quarter knot, but I'd be surprised to have over one knot of current ripping down here. Um, maybe Mark, you've measured it out there, but I haven't measured that in years. But. Well, when you get further off, like the old cell star racing where we did it half three mile beat, uh, when you got to the west, it can be in grid. But generally, we're now today's race is a little shorter and a little closer to the uh, lee shore here. 
<clears throat> so, yeah, not super strong. <clears throat> Usually, the reverse eddy that you might see down along shore is not very noticeable unless you unless the wind's really light, like that whirls we were referring to. There was actually a situation where. And it might have been a little wind line or something too, but guys that actually went around the lure mark, it was pretty obvious you had to go right for one reason or another, I don't remember why, but everybody's going right, so there's this lineup. So some few boats just decided, I'm just, we're just gonna foot off and try to get clear air below this big line, and they ended up going around the fleet. So I think they got into a little bit of a uh, reverse eddy, and this was very light air where we're sitting in the boat, so the current is as big a factor as it can be. But uh, yes. you can, you know, it's not a bad idea to uh, um, check the current. There's not a hole in the water out there. There are a couple uh, ring buoys, but uh, you know, if you have a, a, a GPS, you can find the water and and, uh, and track the movement. Yeah, yeah. So it's got to be under five knots to really have a big, a huge difference. Yeah, yeah, and it's a bigger factor the weather mark than at the starting line. Mm -hmm. All right, the Yacht Club Cove. Okay, back to the Yacht Club Cove. That's, that'd be Southwestern Yacht Club and San Diego right, Yacht Club. I sailed there last night. Teeny area. The docks all sticking out. Right in here. Uh, right in the middle there. And, you know, that's where uh, you know, we grew up sailing Sabbaths. And you know, we've got a few opties and some FJs and stuff, but uh, it's just, as you can see, right underneath the mountain. And, but it funnels down through there pretty good. So it's, it's generally windy. It's one of probably the windiest place in San Diego. <laughs> it is. Yeah. But it, can be blowing, coming. it can be blowing 14 knots in here and have three knots out in the bay. Um, and that's unfortunately where we practice for the worlds in Perth because the only place I breeze in San Diego in November. Um, it's ridiculous to sail on the cove. That's what we did, but it's uh, pretty shifty, pretty sheery, and uh, pretty difficult from from what I can always tell every time. And you know, sailing there last night, we had westerly, and then we had a little southerly, and it shifted back to westerly. It was a little bit weird because at the end of the day, but typically it's good enough sailing. You just have slow shifts back and forth in the middle of the day in the summertime. Um, another race course that some of the high school venues are using right now is right over here on the shoal. Um, outside of the harbor here so they can come up to Kellogg's beach trade off come back out and sail here just really close for trading off and if you get too far one way it could be current oriented or um it can be real puffy and shifty here because the wind comes down the mountain and and bounces a lot so it's just be prepared for heads up and usually medium breeze sailing is the other venue there there's always a flag flying right on the end of the shelter with river patrol so you can get a good idea of what the wind's doing uh, slightly aloft from where you are. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. But I, I really think that that was a big advantage growing up, being able to sail there with the shifty conditions for you know learning boat handling and tactics. And then, like I said before, the advantage of then being able to also go out in the ocean and do speed testing. Uh, and the fact that when the conditions don't change much from day to day, you can pretty much be guaranteed one day after another the same conditions, particularly in the summer. Yeah. Yeah, so that shows the race area pretty pretty good there uh, off the Yacht Club. Uh, yeah. San Diego Yacht Club right at the top and right next to that Southwestern Yacht Club where uh, Caleb came from. Over there, yeah. Most of the, all these other docks on the other shore are commercial, uh, but everything around San Diego Yacht Club and around Southwestern Yacht Club are, uh, are uh, sailboats and club power boats. So that's all I had for all the race courses out there. I don't know if you had any more questions, Josh, or if you have anything more to add, Mark? Yeah, we do have um, another question, and then I had a couple of my own. I think I let you know of beforehand. So the question that um, that came up here, and uh, we're taking off the screen, I might as well come in as well. Hey guys, there you are. Hey. 
That was great, thanks. So um, the question that came in is from uh, Spencer Webster. And he said that he's noticed strong gusts in the lee of Point Loma closer to shore. Do you think it's better pressure closer to Point Loma or the other side of the channel by North Island? That's a pretty big question during like in races, you know, anything where you race out the harbor, you know, do you want to, particularly if there's a uh, incoming current, you know, tide and you want to get to one side or the other, do you go to, you know, down on the lee shore by North Island or do you stay under the point? And like it said, it can be some pretty good puffs under the point, but there's a lot of lulls as well. So I don't know. What do you think, George? Um, it definitely changes day to day. I definitely agree. You got to worry about um, where, where you're sailing. We're, we're sailing. We're talking about this area right here. Um, if we're coming in from the race course, we're going back into the Bay to go sailing. I always find that the high road, the, the high side of the channel and the high side through here always pays to get me back to the crane faster when we're coming back in from sailing. Um, as far as hot rums, we'll, we'll hot rum race will start in the morning. We'll start here and it'll, it'll come out often the top can pay, but other times if you're seeing the hot rum, it's a pursuit race. And there's so many boats on the high road that the low road can actually pay if you're trying to get passed through. So it's, it's tough. If you're worried about the hot rum, it's, it's pretty tough. But if I'm sailing back in to get to the crane first, 90% of the time I'm taking that high road, unless the current's doing something wacky. So coming in here, when you're coming in, it's generally pretty close hauled or maybe all, all completely close hauled because you have the wind it, towards the end of the day is a little bit maybe on the north side of west. Uh, going out, as you can see, it's a little bit uh, of a, uh, uh, it, it's pretty much a beam reach. Uh, sometimes it can be a little tight for some spinnaker boats uh, like the PC, but uh, generally you're flying your kite on the way out. Yeah. Yeah. No, yeah, the hot no. rod is yeah, one of the most popular races with a lot of boats going right through there, back and forth. I think Spencer had a follow-up question as well, um, asking any noticeable eddies coming in or out of the channel during strong flow. Maybe a little know. bit around Bell's Point. Oh, okay. Yeah. It's a moment here. This is Ballast Point right here. And there's a pretty good shoal right here. And so a lot of times it can pay to duck in and get super close on the, if the current's coming out and you're sailing back in, it can pay to get into the shallower spot. But I've seen a lot of boats stop on that shoal. So be careful with that spot there if you're coming back in. Um, and definitely always can see a, on stronger tide days, you can definitely see a swirl off this point when the tide's coming out. Um, if here's back, Saw a gray whale right there, right in the bay. It was a good day. No other real eddies that I can think of per se. That's about it for now. Yeah. Cool. Well, um, as I promised uh, you guys uh, earlier, I had a couple of um, I have a couple of questions that may not have to do with on water. You know, when I when I come to a new city that, that I may not have been to before, or New York Club for Regatta. You know, I think one of the things that we look at in terms of um, you know, organizing our crew and making sure we're all you know, well set up and everything. I think the first question is if you're, you're coming in from out of town and you're not lucky enough to know a club member or someone that you can stay with, where would you guys recommend as like kind of a, a area for a crew house, whether it's a Airbnb or a local hotel or something? Um, to be able to shack up in for, uh, you know, depending on, I guess, whether it's San Diego Yacht Club or Southwestern or Coronado or Mission Bay. I know there's a bunch of different options, but what would you guys suggest? Well, I think uh, one thing that San Diego Yacht Club has been pretty good at, I know with Star Regattas, is trying to house as many people as possible. So that, that may, you know, could be your first option. Uh, we housed 50% of the fleet of the last Star Worlds here. So it was pretty good. Uh, you do need to keep in mind that if uh, planes bother you, that uh, although there is a curfew between 11.30 and 6.30 in the morning, but uh, that's more a little bit further north where I live, not right at the Yacht Club. But any any area in, in Point Loma, certainly, uh, you know, Airbnb, or there's a lot of hotels along uh, Shelter Island. 
uh, which would be uh, the best for San Diego Yacht Club, Southwestern Yacht Club, and and some pretty inexpensive hotels along Rosecrans. That's the main the black line here, the main street. I mean, there's hotels starting at uh, you know seventy, eighty dollars, and uh, you know they get more expensive out on Shelter Island, but it's all uh, walking distance to the club from all those areas. Yeah, there's some great rental houses up here in Point Loma and Ocean Beach in this area. Uh, we've got a lot of VRBOs that way. You can see the airport's right here. So if you don't want to be in a noisy spot, that's there. Mission Bay is a little bit more difficult because this being beach housing, it can be more pricey uh, to find housing. So people will come back in into this area or, or this area, Bay Park, to find housing for Mission Bay if they're not going to a hotel. Yeah, there's also hotels all along Harbor Island, uh, which is right next to the yeah. airport. But like George just showed there, the airport is a 10-minute uh, a walk from the airport to the yacht club. It's uh, everything. And, and there's a bike path and walking path around through there now, too. So it's it's a pretty nice area. Um, so next question I got is um, if, uh, if I'm coming in from out of town, I got a, either an off day or I'm bringing my family and, and they may not be racing with me. Um, what's the best uh, tourist thing to do? Is it SeaWorld, Star India? Is it the aircraft carriers at Sea of Pods game? Oh, what do you San, guys suggest? Oh, San, San Diego Zoo is number one. There you go. That's pretty That's good. And one of the best zoos apparently in the world, but it's, yeah, you got to do San Diego Zoo. And right around the zoo is all, it was a uh, well, actually, I think they had two world expositions there. And so there's that's where all the museums are. Uh, it's, yeah, that's a great area around there. Yeah, the aircraft carrier is pretty cool. Like I said, going out on the point, I think Point Loma Lighthouse is one of the most visited national monuments in the United States. So um, yeah, kind of check that out. Uh, SeaWorld, I guess, it's more of an amusement park than it used to be. It used to be a little more educational than it is now. So, yeah. um, but I don't have young kids anymore. George, better person to ask is George. He's got the, <laughs> well, if, the, if you got kids, you also want to put Legoland on the list. And yeah. there's also a roller coaster at Mission Bay that you might want to hit if they're tall enough. Um, we're, we're getting that tall so far. But uh, the zoo is absolutely number one is a thing for sure. And, you know, if, if you're an older crowd, no kids, the, the Midway, the aircraft carrier is an amazing, amazing place to stop at. And we've had friends come in and say, okay, schedule three hours for it. Well, they, they did their three hours and they did the next day because it's just so amazing. Some people love that stuff. And so it's a really neat, but there's so much to do in San Diego, so many beaches to see and so much, so many things to do that they've got a huge book on that. And we were lucky enough to have the uh, U.S. Sailing Awards and Rolex Yachtsman and Yachtsman of the Year Awards mm -hmm. on the, the Midway um, in February. So that was yeah, quite right. a treat, very cool place to go. So um, what's the, uh, well, what's the hidden gem in San Diego? Something you're not going to find, not, no one else is really going to tell you. You guys are hometown boys. You know, what, what's the thing to go see that, that only the locals really know about? It's the taco shop around the corner. Yeah. <laughs> it's pretty good. <laughs> you come for the Mexican food for sure. But no, just everywhere you go, it's something, something neat in this city. And uh, just the, the rocks and the shore in La Jolla and, if you want to go paraglide, you can do that. If um, There's just so many things to do. It's, it's completely varied. If you want to go surfing, go bike riding, there's so many things to do in the city, but hit a taco shop. Yeah. Mark, same for you, taco shop? Yeah, definitely. <laughs> so I got two more. Um, one for um, kind of the crew dinners. If, uh, if you're going to bring a, a crew out somewhere uh, to go for, for dinner, um, where's the best place to go to bring your crew? There's a ton of restaurants all around the San Diego Yacht Club area. Uh, and, and actually same, not too far from uh, Mission Bay Yacht Club either, right on the uh, Mission Bay Drive. Uh, and Cornell Yacht Club just up the street on Orange, uh, tons of restaurants. But yeah, San Diego Yacht Club just right up on Rosecrans. There's uh, a whole bunch of pubs and Mexican and seafood and everything. So. Yeah, yeah, probably want yeah. to check out the seafood too. There's um, you know, a lot of good fresh fish in San Diego. You want to plug anyone in particular, Mark? Uh, probably one of the most popular places for lunch is Point Loma Seafood. It's pretty simple, but it's a good piece of fish and, and uh, tartar sauce and sourdough bread. But uh, uh, yeah, I don't go there so much anymore because there's too many people in there, too many tourists. <laughs> George, yeah. what about you? 
Well, I'd say if you're going to plug the some of the Yacht Club favorites for the hotels, the Bay Club is directly across from Senior Yacht Club, and they've always have a regatta rate. And if they don't ask for one, and they'll probably give you one. Um, as far as restaurants, walking distance, you go outside San Yacht Club, you turn right. We've got Fiddler's Green, we've got the Brigantine, we've got Miguel's, and um, you know, I'm, I'm missing one or two, but there's they're just Pizzeria. phenomenal, phenomenal restaurants right, right, right around nearby uh, Pizzeria's Old Venice. Just it's not an issue. It's you walk out the club and you can stagger up to these places. They're great. Yeah, and Ian Trotter saying uh, Fiddler's. He's definitely uh, yeah, I'm, putting his his ticket in that hat. I, I was there in um, in June. Really cool place. A lot of half halls on the sides, on the walls, right. and everything. I really think he cool was there place. last Thursday night. <laughs> I'm pretty sure Trotter. <laughs> a lot there. of history there. It was one of the early. Uh, I think maybe number four in the Chart House restaurants. Hmm. Uh, oh yeah. Um, so so in, uh, um, so I lied, two more. Um, one more about the crew and then one just fun question at the end. But uh, it, in the same kind of vein, but uh, if, if you got to stop somewhere for, you know, to get lunch to go, to go out in the boat, um, where's the best place, you know, let's just say around San Diego Yacht Club, you know, if you're going out, rather than getting lunch at the club, you know, just to grab some sandwiches to get out in the boat. Well, we're starboat sailors, so we typically grab a cliff Bar or five and throw them in the boat and they last all week, you know, so that's kind of hard for, <laughs> but the uh, Stars and Stripe Mart's pretty good up the street for sandwiches. I know there's yeah, probably I, a few other favorites. I'm with George on that. I've never been organized enough to actually, you know, get a, <laughs> a sandwich to go sailing, but uh, but that's where I get my sandwiches. Well, our our lo sail lobs, our quantum lobs, is a block away from the Yacht Club, and Stars and Stripes Market's right above it. Actually, it was named Stars and Stripes by Dennis. Dennis is selling it. Uh, but they've got great, great sandwiches and there's a subway right next door. And uh, so, yeah, yeah, that's where I would go. Stars and Stripes. Well, it's just a neat area. We've got several chandeliers and we've got Vons down the street and a big West Marine and five riggers. And it's just a neat place. If you come to regatta, you've got every part you need within walking distance of yeah, San Diego. Yeah. I, I think that's one thing that's really unique about that area of Point Loma. Carl Leichenlob used to say when he was away at Olympics or Pan Am Games that, if you needed something, it was usually easier just to get in the plane, go back to Point Loma, get it, and come back again. <laughs> right. Everything's so, right there. So last question. Um, what's the best thing on the menu or the secret menu in, at in and out It's mm. good number one. I don't know. I guess some people like the gorilla style. Is that what they call that? I don't know. I just, I just get a, uh, a double burger with... Uh, I guess a double double with um, fried onions or grilled onions. Yeah. Perfect. Hey guys, thanks so much for joining us. Today. Any any last words you want to leave any, uh, with everyone about San Diego? Um, you know, come down and see you. How can they get in touch with you guys? I'm sure that you'd love to see them. Yeah, like or, I say, we're know. just right up the street from the Yacht Club. We're a block away. I mean, from our balcony, you can see the Yacht Club. So it's uh, you know just right there and uh yeah eh, certainly anybody's welcome to stop by and uh uh we can give them a little uh, refresher course but uh yeah come visit san diego it's, it is a really great city in a lot of ways great for sailboat racing but uh, great for the family as well yeah well guys thanks again so much uh you know i, I know everyone loves san diego it's the the uh, easiest job in the world of weatherman in San Diego, from what I've heard, but yeah. you know, on the water is a little bit different. So thanks for giving us the tips and tricks. And uh, if any of you all are in San Diego, stop by, look up uh, Quantum Sales San Diego and uh, you know, look up Mark and George. I'm sure they love to sell you a sale or even just, you know, shoot the breeze about one design sailing or whatnot as well, too. So guys, thanks again so much for joining us today. And just a little quick plug for everyone watching in terms of what we have on tap for next week. We have a really cool schedule next week uh, on um, Tuesday at 2 p.m. Eastern time. We're going to be joined by Tom Burnham and Keith Brash of Quantum Racing, Quantum Sales. And they're really going to go through a cool session with us about GoPros and on boats, uh, not only where to place them on some very popular one design boats so you get the right angles, but also how to use the video for debriefing afterwards. So that's going to be a really cool session on uh, Tuesday. And Wednesday, we have a very special interview, family sailing story interview with the Baird family. So we're going to be joined by Ed Baird, Nick Baird, and Ty Baird. And we're going to talk about family sailing with them. So not really the, the same type of thing you would talk to Ed Baird about. You know, we'll try to stay out of the racing a little bit. But we really want to dive into what it means about family sailing in that family. 
Um, so that's gonna be really cool. And then Thursday as well, we have, uh, we're joined by two of our 49er uh, young guns as well, Andrew and, um, and Ian. Uh, and they're gonna be talking 49er sailing and their campaigns try to get to Tokyo 2020 Olympics or 2021 Olympics at this point. And um, not gonna let anything super out of the bag, but stay tuned. We might have a little um, announcement for you guys for a special Starboard Portal session tomorrow. Uh, still working on it, but it's gonna be really cool if it comes together. So stay tuned for that and uh, tune in hopefully tomorrow around 4 p.m. or so. Um, and stay tuned to your social channels to check out what that uh, surprise session is going to be. Thank you again, George. Thank you again, Mark. Thank you, Quantum Sales, for uh, lending us, uh, lending you to us and, um, and for joining us, guys. We really appreciate it. It's quite a cool session. And thank you all for watching, whoever is watching uh, live and whoever watches on playback as well. I uh, hope you guys enjoyed it. And please feel free to share out the link so that other people who may not have seen this and going to San Diego can learn the tips and tricks as well. And uh, if all of you enjoyed uh, this session, um, please support our efforts to build a community of active and engaged sailors through the Starboard Portal by joining or renewing your U.S. sailing membership. Uh, we have, as I mentioned, a ton of great content coming up on the schedule. And thanks to U.S. sailing members, we're able to adapt and evolve to create content like this and better serve our sailors. So please visit us at mem.ussailing.org to join or renew your U.S. sailing membership today. George, Mark, thanks so much, guys. Appreciate right. it. Thank you. Bye. Thanks. Take care. Bye.